Welcome everybody once again to St. Patrick's Cathedral here in New York. Our hundreds of actual parishioners are here with us and our virtual parishioners uh, by the end of today will uh, be up to somewhere between 35 and 40,000 people. So we are all together praying uh, for the good of our country, the good of the world, and end of the terrible pa pandemic. In your goodness and kindness, if you would remember Elizabeth Popick, who died just two days ago. She is the blood sister, Sister Mary Daniel Bauer. Also, Irina and Christopher McGuire, Susan Boswick, who died six years ago today, Bill, Christine, and Spencer Fitzpatrick, who are going through a very difficult um, diagnosis of cancer, Rowena Ar Aroban Blaza, who died um, on 11-17 of this year, Anna then Siova, please remember them all in your prayers. Um, each Sunday especially, I ask the people who are our vir virtual parishioners to do whatever they can to help us uh, keep the church going and keep the lights on and, and all of the good things that live streaming is able to do for so many people that are unable to be here in, in any pew and who because of the age because of the debilitating circumstances are not able to leave their homes. So please do whatever you can to help us and we will continue to do everything we can to bring uh, a beacon of hope to the people of the world. Uh, our celebration today is the Solemnity of Christ the King and our celebrant is His Eminence uh, Cardinal Dolan who will be our homilist and celebrant. Our uh, readers are Beatriz and Joseph and Mark is our cantor. Please join us all in prayer, remotely and actually presently. Thank you. In order to actively participate in today's Mass, we ask that you download the worship program, which can be found online, and you can download it to your smartphones or tablets. The website is www.stpatrickscathedral, all spelled out, dot org slash live. We also ask that you please continue wearing your mask as you sing during today's mass. Please rise and sing our entrance hymn, which can be found in the online program. To Jesus Christ, our sovereign King. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you, that we might offer this holy sacrifice of the Mass this last Sunday of the church year, the great feast of Christ the King. 
we call to mind our sins and ask for the mercy of Jesus. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, Christ our King, grant, we pray, that all of creation, set free from slavery to sin, may render your, you service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet, book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will look after and tend my sheep. As a shepherd tends his flock when he finds himself among his scattered sheep, so will I tend my sheep. I'll rescue them from every place where they were scattered when it was cloudy and dark. I myself will pasture my sheep I myself will give them rest, says the Lord, God. The lost I will seek out, the strayed I will bring back, the injured I will bind up, the sick I will heal, but the sleek and the strong I'll destroy, shepherding them rightly. As for you, my sheep, says the Lord God, I'll 
judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through man, the resurrection of the dead came also through man. For just as Adam all die, so too in Christ shall all be brought to life, but each one in proper order. Christ, the first fruits, then at his coming, those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end, when he hands over the kingdom of his God and fought to his God and Father, when he has destroyed every sovereignty and every authority and power. 
for he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. When everything is subjected to him, then the son himself will also be subjected to the one who subjected everything to him, so that God may be all in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him and he will separate them one from another. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, he will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you are blessed by my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. A stranger, and you welcomed me. Naked, and you clothed me. Ill, and you cared for me. In prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and said, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and welcome you, or naked and clothe you? When did we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them in reply, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did for one of the least brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he said to those on his left, Depart from me, you are cursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. A stranger, you gave me no welcome. Naked, you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or ill, or in prison, and not administered to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you, whatever you did not do for the one of these least ones, you did not do for me. And these will go off to eternal punishment and the righteous to eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
it's not the end of the world. And we use that saying a lot, don't we? It's not the end of the world. For example, little fella doesn't make the starting lineup for the soccer team at school, and he comes home down in the dumps, kind of angry. Come on now, soothes mom. It's not the end of the world. Aura more grave. She gets a diagnosis that her cancer has come back. She's scared and depressed and worried. Come on, honey, her husband consoles. We've beaten this before. It's not the end of the world. Now, as we say that, we, uh, we admit two rather profound truths, don't we? Number one, there will indeed be an end of the world, even though the present circumstance that we're confronting isn't it. There will be an end of the world. And number two, that is <laughs> worth a lot of concern and worry and fear. The Feast of Christ the King, the final Sunday of the church year, everybody, as we profess our faith that Jesus Christ is indeed our King, he will indeed return at the end of the world and as judge of the living and the dead. And that fact, everybody, is worth trembling, trepidation, and terror. But it also inspires a lot of hope, consolation, and perspective. Think about it, hope, consolation, and perspective, right? That Christ our King will indeed return at the end of the world gives us a lot of hope. As we trust his mercy, Jesus, I trust in thee. We trust his mercy in being found among those sheep who hear those longed-for words recorded in this morning's gospel. Come, you blessed of my Father, enter the kingdom prepared for you for all eternity. What hope that gives us. Then there's consolation. Another saying we often use is, who will have the last word? Well, in history, in creation, in life, in the universe, guess who will have the last word? Christ our King. And he is the just one, and we are consoled that all the sorrow and unfairness and injustice and suffering and setback of this life will be settled and set aright when the Word, the Eternal Word, the Incarnate Word, the First Word, the Last Word, Jesus Christ our King returns. In the beginning was the Word. That's how St. John begins his Gospel. And that Word was made flesh. And that Word, Christ our King, will have the last words, everybody. And that brings us consolation, hope, consolation, and perspective. When that, when that mom soothed her little boy who didn't make the soccer team, or that husband, his sick wife, at her cancer diagnosis with those familiar words, it's not the end of the world, they offered an invitation to put things into perspective. It's not so bad. Think of the bigger picture. Place this in the reality of God's everlasting plan. And remember, all things work out for those who believe. At the end of the world, when Christ our King returns as judge, only his word will matter. He has the last word. He alone has dominion, power, and glory. And that helps us put things into perspective. And do we not need that today? You see, neither Donald Trump nor Joe Biden will have eternal dominion. Neither Republicans nor Democrats, the right or the left, 
Wall Street or the Pentagon, COVID-19 or the long far vaccine, not even the new owners of the New York Mets, all right? As important as all of them might be, only Christ our King at the end of time will have power, dominion, and ultimate sovereignty. He'll have the last word. And boy, doesn't that put all our earthly worries into perspective? Doesn't it give us consolation and hope? As we will now profess in the creed, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Okay. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for our Shepherd, Timothy Cardinal Dolan, for all bishops, priests, and all those who guide us in faith, that they may be holy and effective in their mission to draw all people to Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For those who work for the defense of life from its first moment, and for those who work for peace and for justice, we pray to the Lord. For all who have experienced sexual violence, abuse, or harassment, let us pray to the Lord. For American military throughout the world and for first responders to dangers and tragedy, especially those who are in harm's way, we pray to the Lord. For those who are suffering from the coronavirus, that they may be healed and for the happy repose of all who have died from this sickness in recent months, let us pray to the Lord. For all who struggle to make significant changes in their lives, that they may receive wise and compassionate guidance, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Louis Christomitus and Hilaria Cardona and all our beloved death, that they may enjoy the fullness of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We seek the powerful intercession of Mary, our Queen, as we make our prayers through Christ, our King, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing our offertory hymn, which can also be found in the online program. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Oh. 
now, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, this sacrifice by which we are reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow upon all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Heavenly Father, almighty and eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, as eternal High Priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of redemption, making all created things subject to his rule, so he may present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, of holiness and grace, of justice, love and peace. So with with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven. We now sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me The mystery of faith. celebrate this memorial of his death and resurrection, we, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray with confidence to the Father in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. God, you stand. takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, 
I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and united, unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I forgot to mention at the beginning of Mass, there'll be a second collection today for Catholic Charities. Please join in singing our communion hymn, which can also be found in the online program. The King of Love.
Let us pray. Having received this food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ our King, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. We seek, we seek the blessing of Christ the King, especially as for a, a blessed Thanksgiving for all of us and for our families. Uh, we keep in mind those who united with us in worship at home on the Catholic Faith Network, on the Catholic uh, Channel, Sirius XM 129, and our own live streaming. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go, Go in peace, serving the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Please join in singing our recessional hymn, which is also in that online program. Crown him with many crowns. Hey! 